can increase the protein ratio just by instead of let's say doing a full serving I'll do three-fourths of a serving it has about I think 70 calories per cup and then seven grams of protein if you switch from your like almond milk or whatever or oat milk whatever milk you go to that only has like a few grams this is a really easy way to increase your protein without really thinking about anything protein is also the most satiating macronutrient so increasing protein can also potentially help with cravings and overeating your cravings tend to be a lot less you have a less tendency to overeat throughout the day what's up guys my name is kaye and welcome back to my channel street beast tv and in this video i'm going to share with you five of my favorite strategies to increase protein but without adding a ton of calories if you don't know me i'm a nutritionist that mainly focuses on sports performance and relationship with food and as a nutritionist i always recommend most of my clients to increase their intake of protein there is a lot of benefits to protein even if you're not an athlete. So some of my favorite benefits of increasing protein intake is independent of any other factors as long as you're in a calorie surplus, increasing protein can actually increase lean muscle mass. Lean muscle mass is really important, especially the older you get, the more you can maintain, the higher your metabolism is, the better glucose control you'll have, and just the potential to be a little bit stronger. Protein is also the most satiating macronutrient, so increasing protein can also potentially help with cravings and overeating, sugar cravings as well. Increasing protein intake can also help with glucose control, so if you have a high sugar meal, if you have a good amount of protein before or with that meal, the blood sugar spike will be less drastic. Protein also has the highest stomach effect of food out of all the macronutrients, so compared to carbs and fats, when you intake protein, it actually takes your body more energy, burning more calories to uh, digest that protein versus carbs or fat if you're trying to you know, maintain or lose weight. Studies have also shown if you start your day off with a high amount of protein throughout the day, your cravings tend to be a lot less. You don't tend to, you have a less tendency to overeat throughout the day. So making sure your breakfast is really high in protein is also a really great strategy for controlling cravings. And finally, a high protein intake can support muscle growth or muscle retention, depending if you're in a calorie surplus or in a calorie deficit. So if you're trying to build muscle, making sure you have an adequate protein intake will make the muscle Muscle building process much more efficient and on the other hand if you're in a calorie deficit you're trying to lose fat having high protein intake is also going to help you ret retain as much lean muscle mass as possible that's important because you want to make sure you're losing body fat and not a lean muscle mass having a good amount of lean muscle mass on your body I think just has so many benefits and increasing protein intake is just um, a really good and smart way to retain lean muscle mass and build lean muscle mass as we get older it's harder to build and retain lean muscle mass so making sure we have some kind of focus on retaining a healthy amount of lean muscle mass I think is really important how much how much protein you should be intaking that's gonna be dependent on your weight so usually I like to recommend at the lowest end 0.8 grams uh, per pound of body weight um, and on the high end will be 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. But if you want to just keep it simple like me, um, you can do a one-to-one -one ratio. So one gram per pound of body weight. So for me, example, I'm about 130 pounds. So I, I usually try to get around 130 grams of protein a day. I can go higher or lower depending on the day. It doesn't have to be perfect. But I will say most people, if they're not tracking or they don't really know, they are grossly under eating <laughs> the recommended amount that I just uh, described. Also, last note before we get into the tips, whole food sources of protein are, in my opinion, much better than processed sources of protein, like protein powders. Protein powders aren't bad, but I would say you should mainly get most of your protein from whole food sources. The way food has been assimilated in the whole food form is just this magical combination that makes sense when you digest it. Um, protein, but again, protein powder is not bad. Just uh, try not to use it as the main source or the bulk of your protein um, contribution for the day. Anyways, let's get to tip number one. All right, so number one on the list is switching to soy or pea milk. Uh, I'm not gonna get too much into soy. Uh, some people think that soy can be really bad and promote estrogen in, uh, in men and lower testosterone. It's not the case. Do your research. Um, whole food sources of soy is actually really beneficial. and can help regulate your hormones. Um, it's just the soybean oil that comes in a lot of these packaged foods and the GMO soy that is the issue. But if you're getting organic soy in soy milk or tofu or edamame beans, anything like that, soy is absolutely fine unless you are allergic to it. So if you're allergic to it, stay away and go to pea milk, which is pretty much the same thing, but soy milk is cheaper. But anyways, I digress. 
Soy milk has about, I think, 70 calories per cup and then seven grams of protein. If you switch from your like almond milk or whatever, or oat milk, whatever milk you go to that only has like a few grams, this is a really easy way to increase your protein without really thinking about anything. Because for me personally, I like using milk in my smoothies, in my oatmeal, um, in my protein shakes. Sometimes I'll make soy milk lattes. I mean, there's so many ways that I use milk that just switching to a soy or pea milk increases the protein throughout your day very, very easily. Also, a really handy tip that I have for you guys, if you guys do enjoy smoothies like I do, what I do instead of using ice cubes, you know, made from water, I actually will make my own cubes made from soy milk and then so when I make my smoothies instead of watering it down I'll actually make it more creamier by using more milk and then also you have that added benefit of having more protein if you use you know soy or pea milk cubes ice cubes pea milk milk ice cubes soy milk cube milks something like that <laughs> you get what I mean all right number two on my list is TVP TVP stands for textured vegetable protein. This is an isolated source of protein that comes from the soybean. But again, if you're allergic to soy, uh, they also have versions of it where it's derived from peas. Okay, so TVP, it's pretty much a dehydrated like cereal flake. Um, it takes on the flavor, it absorbs the flavor really well of whatever you're cooking it with. Typically, it's supposed to uh, mimic ground beef. So like think of like taco ground beef or a Bolognese meat pasta sauce. That's kind of how you're supposed to use it. But because it absorbs flavor so well and it's so versatile and it looks like cereal, you can actually use this uh, on sweet dishes as well. Like in my oatmeal or in my yogurt or just cold cereal in general. Like when I make my oatmeal, I can increase the protein ratio just by instead of, let's say, doing a full serving, I'll do three fourths of a serving and then the other one fourth will be TVP and then I increase the protein ratio just by doing that. Or sometimes in my stir fries or my rice, I'll do less of the carbohydrates and I'll replace it with some of the TVP and that increases the protein ratio and you don't really taste it. Again, it absorbs the flavor really well. I think you guys should really give this a try. Speaking of don't knock it till you try it, this one it's probably a little bit more weird, but again, don't knock it till you try it. Trust me. <laughs> so number three on my list is using tofu in smoothies and in cheese sauce recipes. I know you're like, what tofu? Well, hear me out. First off, tofu by itself doesn't taste like anything. If you ever just looked at a block of tofu and you just like tasted it, it's it doesn't taste like anything. It's nothing. It Again, it absorbs flavor really, really well. So it tends to mimic the flavor of whatever you're cooking it with and whatever soup or stir fry or whatever kind of steak sauce or meat sauce that you're using, that's the flavor it takes on. So if you're having, let's say a blueberry smoothie, if you just put a half a serving of tofu in that smoothie with the rest of your normal ingredients, you're probably not going to notice that there's tofu in there because tofu doesn't taste like anything. A lot of cheese sauces are also cashew based for the most part. That's the ones that I usually use. But again, if you put like half a serving of tofu also in that cheese sauce before you blend it, probably not going to notice. It's going to actually add a better texture to that sauce and the protein content goes up. By the way, half a serving is about 30, maybe to 50 grams. So maybe you just start with 30 grams in your smoothie or in your cheese sauce and let me know how it goes. But again, don't knock it till you try it. All right, four is using lupini beans. Uh, if you've never heard of lupini beans, they're starting to get more popular now. Um, they are very uh, popular in Italy. Typically beans are a good source of protein, but they usually come with a lot of carbohydrates. So if you're trying to look for more isolated sources of protein, beans usually aren't a great option, but lupini beans actually have higher protein content than I think any other bean. Um, on the planet. So typically the way I use these beans is I will cook a big batch plain, no seasoning, absolutely no flavor. You want them absolutely plain. Why? Because I use these in both savory and sweet dishes. So uh, once, I, once they're cooked, I'll put them in a bag, leave it in the freezer. From there, I can sprinkle it on salads. I can cook it in my stir fries. That's for more of the savory side. And then for the sweet side, I'll actually blend it in smoothies or I'll sprinkle a little bit in my oatmeal or in my yogurt and they're tasteless. Again, you don't really, they don't have much flavor to it unless you 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 know cook it with some kind of sauce or seasoning so again it just depends on the way you prepare these foods but uh, most of the time i'm just sprinkling these uh, across my food throughout the day and you get a good bump of whole foods protein good amount of fiber iron and other great nutrients that comes with beans all right and finally number five is nooch aka nutritional yeast 
Nutritional yeast is pretty much like a, a seasoning. It has kind of like a cheesy flavoring to it. And you just sprinkle this across any kind of savory meal throughout your day and it'll increase your protein pretty substantially. Nooch is typically really low in calories. A tablespoon is about 20 calories and three grams of protein. Uh, nutritional yeast is a deactivated form of yeast. And again, it's just a seasoning that has a little bit of a cheesy uh, taste to it. It's also really high in the B vitamins and then with the extra protein, it's, you know, it's a no-brainer. It's also super cheap as well. So sprinkle this throughout all your savory meals in stir fries um, and cheese sauce recipes, um, on your avocado toast, on your tofu scramble. I mean, there's so many ways to use nooch. Uh, you can't go wrong with it. Unless you put it in your oatmeal or smoothies. Don't do that. Stick with the savory with the nooch. Trust me. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below if you're gonna try any of these strategies. Let me know if you learned anything. Let me know if you have any questions. Other than that, hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you wanna see more from me. That should do it. I'm out.